Let's get a, let me do like computer oh, tricks. Oh no. That'll be the next Don't. thing. <laughs> Today, we're gonna be building the fastest gaming PC that money can buy. But we do that pretty often here. What's unusual is cramming a water-cooled RTX 3090 with 16 CPU cores in a case this size. That's right, our gaming PC is gonna be so small it makes the new generation consoles blush. Wait, why do they blush when it's, it's so small? <laughs> Save time and money with Storyblocks by getting studio quality stock video clips for a fraction of the cost. Check them out today at the link in the video description. The original plan was actually to make this video months ago with a pre-production version of Winter's first case, the aptly named Winter One. But one small problem, our computer didn't fit in it. But fast forward to today, and they've set themselves apart from other manufacturers by remarkably taking our feedback and integrating it into version 1.2 of the Winter One, which I guess would be the Winter 1.2. Two Linus, please open after the review to avoid bias. Well, too late, I've already got bias. Get it? Because two cheeks. So do you want the price info right now? Full marks for presentation, by the way, guys. Uh, sure, how much does one of these cost me to build myself? So base price is $450, and with all the extras, ours is 570. <laughs> I mean, by the time you're buying this kind of hardware, I guess it's not a big deal, but... Um... Okay. The finish on this one's amazing. Oh my goodness. Like me, you might be wondering why at this price, the case can't come pre-assembled for you. And fortunately, the answer is a good one. If you were to build a water-cooled system in it, you actually need to build the system into the pieces of the case while you assemble it, or there's no way to get them inside. That's why. So we will begin with step one. Oh wow, so you install the motherboard right away. And then the graphics card, right away. Warning, do not skip. In preparation, I've already taken the top brackets off of the CPU mount, and we're just gonna put our 5950X in there, a little something like that. Now obviously, to go with the ultimate CPU, we need the ultimate RAM. So we've gone with this kit of 5100 megahertz Ballistics Max from Crucial. It actually results in worse performance than using slower memory with better timings, but this rig isn't about making sense. More megahertz. And continuing that theme, we've gone with the fastest storage money can buy with the two terabyte Samsung 980 Pro SSD. This will be running at full PCI Express Gen 4 speed. And as you guys can see, even though there's no chunky heatsink on it, it has a fan for active cooling. So I would be very surprised if we experienced any kind of thermal throttling. Of course, speed isn't everything. You've also got to have somewhere to store your Call of Duties, you know what I'm saying? So we've got a Sabrent Rocket Q 8 terabyte SSD that we'll be installing in the back. That gives us a total of 10 flippin' terabytes of storage baked right onto our motherboard. Now I just need to find the motherboard tray. There it is. Wow, it's solid. Oh, this is like thick freaking solid metal. I feel like I'm making a pizza, not a computer. Got my, got my computer, just gonna put it in the oven, all right? Let it cook for a little bit. Bake. One thing Winter could improve, I know they're technically higher quality, but I absolutely hate non-ferrous screws. It just makes the assembly process more difficult for no reason. That's it, that's your, that's your computer right there, ladies and gentlemen. I do like computer tricks. That'll be the next big oh, praise no, on YouTube. Don't. <laughs> Well, it's not gonna come out. I mean, I'm so not worried about it falling off the thing. Ah, now for the warning, do not skip. They want you to boot up the machine at this stage for two reasons. Number one, because extracting a defective part at the end of the build is gonna be extremely time consuming and difficult. And number two, you need to reconfigure this PCI Express slot to run at gen three speeds because the riser that they've got is not a gen four capable riser. So we've already done that. Next piece I need, this puppy right here. Get the, okay. God, the machining is just so clean on this thing. Oh my goodness, this is unlike any computer I have ever built before, and that's really saying something. Look at that, slides right into the little slot there. Oh, oh, interesting. There's actually a big enough gap to like jam my ruler in at the top and the bottom. 
Now it's time for our PCI Express riser, which goes in a little something like that. Oh, this is really tight. They did not waste a millimeter. <laughs> no, they really didn't. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. The next step is installing the graphics card already. We've gone with the EK Waterblocks edition of Asus's GeForce RTX 3090 for a handful of reasons. Number one, because it's a 3090. It's the fastest freaking card money can buy. Number two, it is pre-water blocked with this gorgeous block from EK that's gonna save us some time. Number three, it uses the square version of this piece that goes at the top of the block instead of the one that's angled like this. That's really important because we're not gonna have enough clearance for the other version. Now, you can convert the other version to this one with a belt sander, but in a build like this, I don't think you wanna do that. How the hell does this work? That's a small oversight. They assumed my card would have a double wide PCI backplate, but it doesn't. So now I just have a gap. Fortunately, I build a lot of stuff and I have a lot of random stuff kicking around. So I've got this double wide PCI cover that I'm just gonna chuck in there that shouldn't look too out of place. Oh gosh, that's tight. This seems like a cheesy solution given the otherwise premiumness of the build, but I don't have a better one. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of black tape here to hold this down. Oh, wow. That is a really nice power button. Oh my God, wait, it's on a kale blue switch. That is hilarious. Now it's time for the power supply bracket. And this is a cool story. They actually changed the location of the power button based on our feedback because we wanted to be able to install a crazy 1200 watt, not quite properly SFXL power supply and moving it just a little bit out of the way made all the difference. Now it's time for the first of our two water cooling radiators somehow. We're using dual 120s, but this is really cool. If you use the right ones, right now Corsair is compatible, you can actually do two 280 millimeter rads in this thing. One area where winter could stand to improve their instructions though is in the orientation of the leads coming off your fans because the case isn't yet assembled, so you have no context for where this is going to go unless you flip forward. So I determined that I think the best spot for this one is coming off to this side like this. And we gotta just screw this assembly together. With that assembled, now it's time for, oh, I wish they'd label this stuff. Which one? They are identical confirmed. Okay. Oh my goodness, these feet. Oh, cork bottom, solid machined aluminum, and doesn't cost as much as the ones on the Mac Pro. So this whole case costs less than a Mac Pro set of wheels. Take that, loser. How am I supposed to do this? I need three hands. Do you have the no, whole thing upside down? No, no, it's right side up. Yeah, I have the whole thing upside down. Uh, okay. <laughs> that looks super uneven. Oh, fittings. Oh, goodness. Oh, that's tight. Oh, okay. Uh, ah! Hold on, one moment please. If this is identical, then when this goes here, it must be identical. Ah! Ah! Like that. Ah! Now this puppy is gonna go on uh, 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 here. How the F am I supposed to get at these fittings to tighten them? Uh, what did you go fetch just now? Um, and this will only make the situation worse. Here's the pass through for our power supply, which is going to make it quite literally impossible to get at this one. We have to run this tube now, which is a perfect opportunity to show you guys this incredibly cool swiveling 90 degree angled fitting from Coolance. Now, normally a 90 degree fitting would have about this profile. That will not work in this case. So in order to make this thing, they actually made it out of two pieces this block that's kind of bored out down the center, and then this centerpiece with two O-rings here. So it goes into the top of our GPU like this, and then we're basically just relying on O-ring lube to swivel it. So I would never recommend swiveling it this way, although technically it could work. I love it. Now we just gotta put this on here. Oh my goodness, this is nuts. If the fan wasn't on here, it'd be pretty easy. Just gotta kind of friction Turn it on the one side here. It's gotta get that up. Ah, there we go. Okay, that's what we call the old friction turn. 
We need lower profile compression fittings as well. This is not going to fit. Oh crap, our regular profile ones are not gonna fit on here either. Just don't get your wiener in here, all right? Oh, absolutely perfect. Now we're in action. Do I have the fittings in the right spot? Route tubing and cables before mounting power supply. Wait, it wants you to fill the loop now? We haven't even put the other rad in yet, but th that's the end of the instruction. How does that work? Oh, I guess this is as good a time as any to show you guys this incredibly cool block pump reservoir combo from Barrow. It's got a DDC pump, which as much as I'm not a huge fan of the DDC series compared to the D5 is a heck of a lot better than the generic no-name pumps you often find on these sorts of solutions. Then you've got this acetal piece here in the middle and finally a copper cold plate that you just kind of put on whichever mounting bracket you need and goes on the bottom and is sealed with an O-ring. I guess the rad just like goes on now? But then, hold on a second, if I have a radiator in here, how the devil am I supposed to screw in the power supply? I'm trying to figure out how the mounting hardware goes into the AMD backplate, and we might have a bit of a problem. There's a bag for, it just says AM4 and used for AMD plate form, but it's empty, so. I think we've got a solution. So let's put some thermal compound on here, and <clears throat> there are gonna be those of you who don't like it, but basically, it's 632 threading. We've got tons and tons of 632 bolts. So we threw a plastic washer on there and we're doing a hard mount. For better or for worse, it's on there. And holy crap, that is why we needed to use this low profile AIO solution. ABC, wait, what the crap? Why don't, if they're gonna laser, you already put the work into lasering it. Which one is which, do you know? A is Phil. And then B is Sandra. Wait a minute, Alex. This, I, this is an this is a full size ATX power supply. It's a, yeah, it's a small one, but it's 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 ATX. So like I was saying, we're using this thousand watt power supply. Oh, wait, did we? Why is that one here, Nicholas? Before we go any further with the water cooling, it's time for us to start plugging in some of our power supply cables. Man, everything looks so clean till you start putting the power supply cables in. Oh my goodness, this is so. Freaking tight. There we go. See you later. Just gonna bend this down so it doesn't stick into the fan. Damn. This is ridiculous. How many fittings do you want for your CPU block? Yes. We're going full mad lad today, ladies and gentlemen. I think I can do it. Just need to get it. Oh, yes. Okay. We're in. Oh. Nice. Ah! Okay, how's that look? Okay. Uh, I need another right angle, actually. One of the uh, EK ones. Oh no, the other one is over here. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think we can do this. I did another dual 90 over here. It's not the greatest thing ever. Call it a 180. The main benefit of this approach is flatness. And that's it. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. We are getting real close, ladies and gentlemen. You've gotta be kidding me. What the hell is this? Oh, and now we need a Molex connector. Oh, no. Alex, what do I do? Well, it's for RPM sense so that your computer can automatically shut down if your pump fails. Kinda important. Frickin', you know what? I give up on RPM sensing on it though. Mm -mm. Crap. No, no, I got this, I got this. Oh, oh my God, I think I got it. Holy crap, they're in. All right, whoo! We ready? I'll use this power supply that totally doesn't fit to prop it up. Do we have our funnel handy? Oh, wow, look at that. Oh. Okay. My hope is that this will fill relatively quickly and easily because, oh, it's already full. It's already full, it's already full. Yeah, but I mean, like, we need to be real ready. Oh, uh, oh, I because, see. Because, like, we don't have a reservoir. Okay, sure. Okay, all right, yeah, punch it. Okay. Something sounds mad. Yeah, what's whining at us? Cut, cut. <laughs> Turns out this doesn't look exactly like a DDC internally, so we'll need to figure out exactly what it is. But before I do that, I wanna figure out if it works. And I've never done this before, so uh, yeah, be ready to cut this off immediately, Alex. Okay, it works. Well, now I'm tempted to just frickin', I mean, how much water could possibly come out of here?
Go, Pumpy Boy. What the Shaz bot is going on here? New idea. So that tells us there's water there. So what is going on? Wait, I didn't plug it in. <laughs> Linus. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I just just chill, okay? Just, oh, oh. oh. Hey, oh, there water. we go. I hear movement. Oh, nice. Oh, there's a big bubble. Let's give it a little tip while it's uh, powered off. Sometimes I find you get really big bubbles that way. There we go. Uh, maybe try re reorienting it a bit. Without spending another hour tilting and tipping it around to get these air bubbles out, I think this is about the best we're gonna do. If this was my system to daily drive forever, I would just sit and let it run like this for like a few days. Because you can see we're just getting these tiny, tiny little bubbles coming out of it. And once they're up here in the tube, they can't get out. We're just gonna call it good enough and uh, get as much of the water out of this tube as we can, pack it with paper towel, and do a quick fitting swap here. Okay, stop. Yep, 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 that's good, that's good. Okay, woo! Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Let's cable manage this puppy. Here we go. Do, 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 oh wow. That's really freaking tight. Uh, oh my goodness. They tell you to pre-attach the cables, but they don't say how you're supposed to get it in there with the cables pre-attached. What the crap? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hold on. <clears throat> oh God. Wait, are you sure this power supply fits? Thanks to some movie magic, we got it flipped around and got the power supply in there. All we had to do was move this radiator around the other way, shorten this extension, shorten all the tubes, and... Right, change these fittings. Ah, I just got it. I'm doing some... Oh, wait, not this. Oh, crap. Let me just need to kind of, you know, give it a kind of... Just push on it. Yeah, yeah, push that in there. Uh-huh. Ugh, tighter. Ugh, jam in here. Oh yeah. Check it out, Brandon, it's actually not that terrible. And I think both of these fans still spin. Oh crap, this one doesn't. <laughs> so tight. <laughs> ah! All four of them can spin. Now all we need to do is pl Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh wow, that's really freaking tight. Not even in the way that I thought it would be against the front here. Holy crap, it is touching. It is literally, oh, okay, no, there we go, okay, it's in. This thing is so compact. I don't even want the 280 mil rads, you know? This is, this is enough. <laughs> now the only challenge that remains is that part of that process was draining the loop. So we get to do that all over again. All right, hold on, here we go. Uh, oh, shh. This tubing is not, like it's not, it's not grabbing enough. F it, pulled this one out too. F off, F off! What I really want is the right size tubing, but I will settle for a longer one, yes. Fortunately, we found some quick connects lying around and we're able to take a page out of AIO manufacturer's playbook by doing a little something called this. Why are you not, oh! The other one's going dry and this is not plugged in, Alex! Wait, it is plugged in. Why is it not going? F off, just spin. Okay, hold on. F off. Oh. Yeah, that pump is not working. Where is it? Did it do something? Yeah, it's working. It's working? How's that even possible? Hello? Hello? Um, it's leaking. What is? Right here. Oh, Alex. <sighs> The thing, the thing that's part of the rad, this, it's not in. No, that doesn't seal. Why would it not seal? Because it doesn't. So we're gonna turn the machine off, swap the pump, take off. Oh God, why is this quick connect not working? What the heck? That's really not what it's supposed to do. These quick connects are dead. Dang it. Stop, 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 stop. Oh. <laughs> Freaking really, you know? Well. I still don't think we lost enough water that it's gonna be a huge problem. And I still recommend this method for filling a reservoirless system like this. Uh, you just need to make sure you get new quick fittings, quick connect fittings that work. Okay. Here we go. You piece of shit. If you turn it off and turn it back on, do you think the bubbles will leave? Or like just get trapped somewhere that's not a problem? Why? 
And we can't use the colder ones because the fitting size is not correct, right? Oh, come on. After spraying the fittings with fluid film, I think this is gonna work. So we're gonna, we're gonna pop the, you have gotta be kidding me. Well, this one worked, so that's a good sign. Okay, so this is it then, the moment of truth. Put it high. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. We got, oh God, it's fine. I just need to, no, David, up here, up here. I gotta put the thing in the thing. Oh, 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 here, here it comes. We're pumping. There's still a little bit of bubbles going, but like I said, if you ran this for like a week, it would bleed out even all these little bubbles and you'd have a perfectly full loop. As it is, we are closing it up and we're gonna get some thermal results now. <laughs> it's finally built. <laughs> Put on like side panels and stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. This thing is absolutely sick. It's oh. so good. Oh, oh. Wow, that is sick. I love it. Okay, let's do another. One hit's not enough. This is, this is the drug that is like addictive, you know? Look, sometimes I talk without thinking about talks words. Okay, this is a little, oh, no, you bastard. I won't. Damn. <laughs> this is a super cool case. Even just launching the game, we put Noctua industrial PPC fans in here and we haven't tuned the fan curve. So these fans are just, they make a, they make a breeze under the case here. Yeah, what are our temps right now? Just idle. Uh, like 43 degrees on the CPU. All right, not bad. <laughs> we are in good shape, ladies and gentlemen. We got Cyberpunk 2077, notoriously heavy to run at 1080p with ray tracing set to ultra and we are running at over 60 frames per second. Okay, I know it's 1080p, but, 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 but ray tracing ultra. Look at the lighting, it's crazy. Look at this guy, oh, poor guy. Oh, it's awful, the humanity. Like, how is this game still a meme? I mean, they did fix the bug where the cops just literally apparate behind you when you break a law or whatever. They said they did. Oh, they, oh, okay, well, whatever. I don't actually play this game because no one plays this game. Here, our GPU is at 43 degrees. <laughs> Did the water cooling work? I think that's a big, fat, heavy yes. And our CPU is at 67 degrees, which is actually a little higher than I might have expected, but still easily respectable. I don't know too much about the actual design of this Barrow CPU block, so it might just not be an amazing block, and that might be perfectly normal. You know what else is perfectly normal? Me getting little adorable handwritten notes from the manufacturers who send us review samples. That's actually not normal. So let's, let's see what they were worried was going to bias me. Dear Linus, it's a really unique feeling to have the creator of a channel that taught me so much about building PCs review a case that I created. Thank you for being a source of inspiration. Forever? Does that say forever? Fuzan. Aw, thank you. You did a great job, by the way. It's very expensive, but it's really cool. You know what else is cool? Our sponsor. Storyblocks helps you bring your stories to life without sacrificing due to time, budget, or lack of resources like time and budget. Storyblocks features over 1 million different stock assets and you can save time using Storyblocks' in-browser video editor. It features pre-designed templates, animations, and outros, and they use an affordable subscription model. Their unlimited all-access plan gives you unlimited video and audio downloads instead of a costly pay-per-clip model, and we use it all the time, especially here on TechWiki, where we don't always have the time to go out and shoot the perfect B-roll footage. So stop wasting time and money and go check out Storyblocks at storyblocks.com slash Linus Tech Tips. If you guys enjoyed this video and you like watching us cram crazy gaming rigs into tiny, tiny cases, it wasn't water cooled, but there's an even smaller one we did a while back where I actually had to like put all my weight on it in order to close the case. Maybe go watch that one. It's pretty funny.